Hello, and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. And today we have a very special class prepared for you. This is a chair yoga based stretch class for the office. So, when you're sitting in your chair at work, you can stretch out. Very important if you're sitting for lots of hours. Now this said, please, um, the chair, no wheels, no wheels on your chair, please. Even if there's swivel wheels that lock, you don't know, it could start moving around. The other thing for surface would be, um, now I have a tile floor, so I have a proper yoga mat down underneath my chair. If you don't have a yoga mat, maybe you have an exercise mat you can put underneath your chair in case you have a tile floor. A disclaimer, so if you are medicated for anything at all. Please discuss this first before doing this video or any other exercise program to see if, just discuss it with the medical health care practitioner that knows your body best to see if it's appropriate for you. I don't know you, you're not a client, I, I don't know your background. So let's play safe. You can even show the video to um, that medical health care practitioner for approval. It's a very safe and gentle approach. However, like I said, I don't know your particular issues regardless of your age. So now, I want to give you a couple of tips when you're working in the office. First off, you want to maintain your hydration. I'm down here in South Florida and it's overly air conditioned. Up north can be overly, you know, with uh, heat. So you want to just make sure that you're properly hydrated because oftentimes, particularly in the air conditioning, people forget to drink water. The other thing for yoga is how do you determine your effort? Well, it's based on your breath. So if you find it start to hold the breath, that means you've gone too far beyond what your body can handle. This is very gentle movement, but some of the stretches are kind of deep. So you just stop and rest whenever you personally need to. The last thing I want to discuss with you is how you're sitting in your chair. So I'm going to lower the camera a bit. And what I want to show you is this. I'm going to step off into the white so that you can see. So when you sit back into a chair and you're sitting down, what you want to make sure is this hip joint, the acetabulofemoral joint, rides higher than the tibiofemoral joint of the knee. We have hip flexor muscles that wrap around a bit and then they connect, they don't connect, but they lie in front of these quadratus lumbora muscles of the low back. So iliopsoas and quadratus lumborum. Those are the areas that when you're sitting a lot, get super tight. So we want to help them. What do you do? You bring your seat higher. That's also in your car, by the way, as well. Sit higher. So you can have pillows or a cushion underneath you. I have a cushion on my chair here, um, and that will help you. So that's about it for my tips and suggestions. Let's get started. So I'm going to tip the camera down. And T, my cat, might appear now and then. That would be T for terrific. Great. So when we sit in a chair, you want to make sure that you have contact with your sits bones, the ischial tuberosity. So you take your hands underneath the buttock flesh. You pull the flesh straight back and out wide toward the shoulders. And this is going to put your posterior pelvis into proper alignment. We want to have the feet firmly on the floor. Now in this class, we're going to utilize some yoga accessories. We have a yoga bolster. Now you don't need a bolster. You can use a cushion from the sofa in your office or a pillow. Then we also have a yoga strap. Well, maybe you use your belt if you don't have a proper yoga strap. And yoga blocks. Now with the yoga blocks, we have level one, level two, and level three. You don't have yoga blocks, maybe you have a good thick book. Just make sure you don't slip and slide. So now we want to settle in and we're going to start working all different types of actions 
to warm up the spine and then into the hips as well. So for this, I'm going to sit a little forward. I like that. Now, for some, you may absolutely need to have support on your back. So that's when you would use your yoga bolster or your pillow. And I'm choosing not to, which is fine for me. Hands down on the thighs, bringing the feet chair width apart. And on the inhale, I'm going to start what's called a spinal extension. And this is referred to as the cow pose. It's an open-hearted posture, right? Drawing shoulders back. And then on the exhale, I slide the hands forward and just hook them over the knees. Belly button is drawn in. This is a seated version of an abdominal crunch called the cat. So this sequence is called the seated version of the cow and the cat. The breathing in yoga is done in and out through the nose, if possible, if not possible, so be it, in and out through the mouth, of course. And one more of each. You want to move slowly, not quickly. And you can make the movements as small or as large as you need. Roll on up. Now I'm going to interlock my fingers because I know that there's a lot of carpal tunnel syndrome with office work. And I'm going to create a sideways number eight. And you might feel or hear a little snap, crackle, pop. Usually that's really just some oxygen, little oxygen bubbles getting into the joints. As whenever we move, we've got the blood going into the joint. We've got nutrients and oxygen. And reverse direction and of course within that blood is water so it's all beneficial I find the reversal kind of peculiar but it's good to break a habit and then we're going to lower the hands down I'm going to do a couple of shoulder rolls and when you feel achy in the upper back shoulder area this is also a nice movement to do now we're going to bring the feet wider than the mat Lateral rotation of the feet slightly open, knees in the same line as the second to third toe. So this is referred to as seated wide angle. Holding steady. Now I'm using the back of my arms to press the legs open. But I have orangutan arms, you know, in length. So if you need to use your hands, the idea is to maintain this hip external rotation lateral rotation as well in Upavishta Konasana, seated wide angle pose. Now we're going to focus on the calf muscle. So what happens with lots of sitting? The blood will pull down into the lower leg. So we want to utilize the calf muscles, in particular, the soleus muscle, which means the second heart. And the soleus, part of its job is to basically help the venous return of the blood back to the heart. So let's stimulate it a little bit. So we're going to lift your left heel off the floor and then very slowly lower the foot down, fully articulate the length of the foot and up with the right, so it's going to give a pumping action to the calf. It's also going to be very good for your ankles, as well as the plantar fascia, the connective tissue underlying the feet. One more to each side. Sitting tall, belly button in. Now we're going to lift both simultaneously. But it's not about rushing it up into the toes. Lovely. Now this next movement, if you have spinal issues like uh, bone density issues, osteoporosis or spinal stenosis, bulging, herniated discs, the list can go on and on. Again, you want to have caution you would sit up tall, but always check with that medical care practitioner first if you can do it at all, right? So if you don't know, then you would sit up tall. But however, I'm going to take this into a spinal flexion, a forward flexion movement. I'm going to utilize my blocks, bring them out in front, 
So maybe I need the blocks and maybe I don't. So palms down, extend the spine forward, but then I lower down into flexion, dropping the head. If you have hypertension, even if you're medicated for it, or vertigo, I would keep the head up. So maybe you're super tight in those inner thighs and back, plus this also gets the sacroiliac joint excellent stretch for that area. And you can use your blocks and you can stay upright, no collapsing. Only time the rounding happens is when you're all the way down. So you can always sequence the blocks down a level. Here's level two. And maybe level one feels good for you. And maybe all the way down feels good for you. Big stretch to that low back. Keep pulling the belly button in to protect the back. Now I'm going to bring the hands to the thighs and I'm going to slowly roll it up, belly button in, coming all the way up to the top. And now we toe, heel, the feet together. Well, not necessarily together, but closer together. I'm going to sit back into the chair, do some shoulder rolls. Now inhale, I open the arms out. Exhale, I'm going to self-hug. So I'm paying attention. My top arm is my right arm. By the way, I mirror you, and that's how I'll call the right and left. Hopefully I'll get it right. <laughs> so I'm trying to reach the fingertips in behind those, um, the scapulae, the shoulder blades. I'm going to sit up and away from the chair a little bit so that I can do a rotation of the vertebral column. Very, very important for the health of the spine. Stopping at the center, inhale, open the arms wide. I'm going to exhale, self-hug. And this movement I call rock the baby. Rock that internal baby. It's nice to give yourself a little TLC. Release the arms down. I'm going to come sitting forward a bit on the chair. Again, use your bolster behind you if you cannot sit upright without support. You don't want you going into pain. I'm going to slip my hands in by the opening of the chair, and I'm bringing my hands over the chair seat, the back of it. Now I'm going to thrust my chest up, shoulder blades retract, pushing down into the feet. And ultimately, I'm going to lift my chin. Now, I'm going to look at you because it's hard to talk that way. The process of lifting the chin is very beneficial for the anterior muscles, the front muscles of the neck, and your thyroid gland. So I'm going to open it up. In Bhujangasana, modified cobra pose. And then inhale, chin to neutral. That's the blood rush to that thyroid gland, excellent for hypo, hyperthyroid, and Hashimoto's. And then I release the arms, coming into some shoulder rolls again. Now I'm going to ask you please to sit back into the chair. This directive is going to be for people who do not have um, uh, hypertension, who are not medicated for hypertension. And also, if you have some issues with your arms, I'm going to show you something else how you can do it. So, first I'm going to direct people to interlock the fingers and bring the hands underneath the thighs. But if you're medicated for hypertension, it's one hand on the other. If you find that you have a hard time lifting your leg up with your arms, then you can use a strap too to help you out with that. So I'm going to go back to lifting the leg. Now in yoga, there's oppositional movement at all times. So when I go to lift the right, I'm going to push down into the left. Shoulders are back and down. Belly button is in sitting tall. Now I want to work the ankles some more. So now I'm going to plantar flex, then dorsiflex. Typically we say point and flex. 
but the words properly are plantar flex and dorsiflex. Get the mobility of the ankle into the toes. I'm going to do one more of each. Now rotate the ankle. Men are very, very typically tight in the ankle area. And when I ask them, we're going to reverse direction to do this movement, they start wanting to move other parts of the body. I maintain it's because women have worn high heels, but we had to pay a price for that later on, huh? Now we're going to do a gentle knee swing, good for the tibiofemoral joint. And then we're going to do hip circles, getting into that acetabulofemoral joint of the hip. Now I'm not going fast. Taking my time with it, I'm going to reverse direction. Now, don't worry if you can't touch the floor with your toes, no big deal. Just make sure you're sitting upright. Good. Now, I'm going to hold here. Now, I'm going to place the ankle across the left thigh. When I sit like this, I want to make sure my left ankle is in the same line as the left knee, same line as the left hip. Now, Caution, if you have osteoporosis, no way for this position, please. So, if you get the approval to do the practice, you would do it this way on the side of the foot, which is on the inside, the block is on the inside of the left foot, side of your right foot is on the block. Much safer if it's a full out osteoporosis diagnosis. Now I'm gonna go back to ankle across, I'm going to place my hands, I'm going to sit back in the chair, place the hands onto my inner thigh flesh, not the inner knee. The patella, the kneecap is not officially attached to anything. You can literally malalign that with too much pressure, so we don't want to do that. Now, we want to make sure that we're really pushing down into that left foot so that we don't slouch over. When my elbows straighten, my chest is nice and high. Spine is lifted. This is a modified version of the um, seated pigeon pose, kapotasana. If you want to go deeper, then you place the forearms on the shin, right elbow on that right thigh, and you just, it will get deeper. Now, careful, you don't want this rounding stuff. You want to keep that chest lifted, belly button in, spine extended. Woo. Feeling it in the lateral rotators at the hip, especially that piriformis muscle. And the sciatic nerve runs under the piriformis and for some people, believe it or not, through the piriformis muscle. And so it's a wonderful routine if you do have sciatic issues. Not acute stage though, please. If you want to go further with this, well maybe you can bring your arms over. Now this is where your blocks could come into play. You can use them, whatever is appropriate for you. That's why I love the blocks. Pulling the heart forward, stretching out those lateral rotators. When I come out, Hands go onto the shin, inhale, I pull the torso forward and up. Now on the exhale, I'm going to dance my left foot into the middle and just cross right thigh over left. If you can't go any further than this, that's fine. If you can, hook, hook your um, right foot, your right ankle behind the left. I had to look down to figure it out. Now, my right thigh is on top, so we're going to bring the arms out. Now, I'm going to crisscross left over right. If you have shoulder issues or rotator cuff muscle issues, hands to the shoulders. Otherwise, back of the hands face each other. If the hands don't reach and you're kind of like here, well, then you can use your strap to hold on to. Otherwise, you could also cross your wrists for full out Garuda, Garudasana, Eagle Pose. Now inhale, I'm going to lift the elbows higher, looking up at the ceiling. On the exhale, I'm going to take this into a seated abdominal crunch, 
and bring my elbows toward my belly button. And inhale, we're gonna lift it up toward the ceiling. Pull your wrists a little further away from your face for a deeper, deeper scapulae stretch. And then exhale, elbows toward the belly button. Again, inhale, we're going to take it up. Exhale, one more time to the belly button. We're gonna hold for a few moments by pulling the belly button in. You engage the deepest of your core muscles, that transverse abdominis. Inhale, you lift up. Exhale, untangle yourself. <laughs> and uncross the legs. We're going to come into some seated cat-cow again to release ourselves. That transverse abdominis muscle is your, basically your internal girdle, your internal corset. Very important in the practice of yoga and throughout, engaging it throughout your daily activities. And now I'm going to slowly roll on up. And we're going to take some nice big shoulder rolls again, just to release it all. Interlock fingers or not, palm on up, uh, back of the hand to the palm of the opposite hand to help you lift. Or utilize your yoga strap, push down into the right, inhale, exhale, lift the left, shoulders back and down. Might feel an isometric contraction in your bicep muscles when you do this. And now we're going to focus on those ankles for a little bit with the dorsiflexion, plantar flexion movements, point and flex. And now rotate. One ankle might be tighter than the other. I think this is it on me. That's all right. You do the best you can, but you don't quit when presented with a challenge. Good. Knee swings, hip circles, scoot that out of the way. Remember, we don't want to go fast with these movements. We can go small or large with the movements, but not fast. Let's see the femoral joint of the hip. Good. Hold steady a moment, and then we're going to take that and bring it across. So we have left ankle over the right thigh, right ankle, knee, same line as right hip joint. Remember, osteoporosis blocked to the inside of the right ankle with the left side of your foot on that block. We start out with both hands. I sit back, both hands are on that left thigh, pushing down. I can tell you right now, see how my shoulder wants to go up? That's because this is the tighter side for me. It just is what it is. So this is doing a modified seated pigeon, kapotasana. If you want to go deeper, forearms. I have left elbow pushing down into left thigh, not inner knee. Woo, mama. <laughs> Belly button is in. Chest is lifted, breath in and out through the nose. Oh, it's talking to me. Let's see where it takes me. If I can even go further, well, I'm going to grab the blocks because that's just how it feels today. Needs a little TLC through the blocks. So we're stretching out those lateral rotators in that hip. Piriformis, especially, you free up your lateral rotators, you free up your back, folks, I can promise you that. Breath in and out through the nose. You can always try going to the floor. Maybe your body likes it, maybe it doesn't. Now I'm gonna bring the hands onto the shin and slowly bring myself up. Belly button is in. So your, it's your call if you want to roll up or extend forward, all right? It depends upon any potential spine issues, though, right? So then you would roll up. Now I'm going to bring the right foot into the midline of the mat. Cross thigh over thigh. 
Left thigh is on top. I'm going to hook around the right ankle and I'm going to open up. Remember those of you with shoulder issues or rotator cuff muscle issues, hands would go on the shoulders. Otherwise, we can go back of the hands to face each other. Use a strap if they don't reach each other. Cross the wrists if you can. And this is what's going to take you to the full out Garudasana. That would be Eagle Pose. Now, inhale. I'm going to lift my elbows higher. Exhale, elbows to belly button. Inhale, elbows up. Look up at the ceiling. Exhale, elbows to belly button. Inhale, we take the elbows up, up, up. Look up at the ceiling. Exhale, we're going to hold here for a few moments. Belly button drawn in. Engage the transverse abdominis. The rest of the abdominal muscles which are involved in trunk flexion. And then inhale, we take it up. Exhale, we're going to slowly release, careful with those rotator cuff muscles, and uncross the legs. Let's do a little bit of shoulder rolls here. And then again, a little sequence of cat cow as big or as small as you like, but please not fast. Take your time with the movements so you can truly experience each movement of a posture. And then I'm going to come all the way back up. Now I'm going to fully sit back into my chair and I'm going to grab the outer right leg of my chair. Left hand to the waist. Sit up tall. Inhale. As I slide down, my sternum, my breastbone faces the ceiling. Exhale, left arm arcs up and over. You want to make sure that you're pushing down into that left foot so you're sitting in the left hip. Do not turn your torso toward the floor. That's going to collapse the right side organs. We want to make sure that sternum is toward the ceiling. In lateral flexion, Anjaneyasana, crescent moon pose. Inhale, turn left palm to the ceiling, grab a hook, reach out, let the fingers reach as well to return to center. Exhale, hold a moment. Now we're going to bring that left hand to the outside of the right thigh. You can do this with legs together or you can make this a little more work. I'm going to sit a little forward for this and put the block between my knees. The ankles are only as wide apart as the knees. I'm going to drape my right arm over the chair backing and I have like those orangutan arms so I can literally reach the seat. However, maybe you grab the side leg of the chair then. Inhale, we sit tall, squeeze the block, press into the feet, belly button in, exhale, turn and look over your right shoulder, chest is lifted, shoulders back and down, all twisting postures are very beneficial for both the large and small intestines, especially for peristalsis. Now I'm going to hold this, the twist, but I want to get um, some work in the neck for you, some movement. So inhale, turn the head, look over the left shoulder. Exhale, turn the head, look over the right. If you have vertigo, you want to keep your head forward. Inhale, turn the head, look over the left. Exhale, turn and look over the right. Inhale, turn the head, look over the left. Exhale, turn the head and look over the right. Inhale, head center. Exhale, torso and arm center. Hold for a moment. And let's just take some nice big shoulder rolls. Good. Now we take it over to the other side. I sit back for this and Left hand takes a hold of the outer left leg of the chair, feet firmly on the floor, right hand to the waist. Inhale, as I slide down, I turn my sternum toward the ceiling. Exhale, I'm going to bring that right arm, whoo, I feel this, 
up and over, breath in and out through the nose. Guarantee yourself by pushing down into your right foot, keeping the right hip firmly in the chair. We don't need you falling over. Sternum turned toward the ceiling to protect left side organs from collapsing. Inhale, turn the right palm toward the ceiling. Grab a hook, push down in the right foot, reach out through the right. Exhale, come back to center. Bring the right arm to the outside of the left thigh. So this is where you can bring legs together or sit a little forward and put the block directly between the knees. So right hand outside left thigh, left arm over the chair backing. Inhale, push down into the feet. Exhale, roll left shoulder back, turn the head and look over that left shoulder. Now we want to get some movement through the neck. So inhale, turn the head, look over the right, but maintain your twist. Exhale, turn the head, look over the left. Inhale, turn the head, look over the right. Exhale, turn the head, look over the left. This is half spinal twist, half fish, Ardha Matsi Andrasana. Inhale, turn the head to the right. Exhale, turn the head and look over the left. Inhale, head center. Exhale, torso, arm back to center. Lower the block down. Let's take some nice big shoulder rolls. Lovely. Now I'm gonna bring uh, my blocks out in front and I'm going to bring my heels onto the blocks. The blocks are side by side, level one. Heels onto the blocks, legs together. I'm going to use my strap here and bring it around the balls of the feet. Now, when we do this, we want to make sure, number one, the toes are stretched wide apart. But when you sit tall and you pull forward, now I can feel that those blocks are going to shift. So I'm gonna bring them a little more forward. We also don't want the chair to tip, all right? So that's very, very important. Now, if you have the spine issues, you can always stay upright. So instead of straight arm, I'm gonna ask you to inch your hands back a little because now the elbow is bent. Once my elbow is bent, I get to engage my bicep muscles to help me pull, not over pulling from hunched shoulders. And my spine is elongated. I'm not rounded at all. Belly button is in, lengthening forward, right? Now watch the chair, make sure it doesn't tip. For some of you, you might have the flexibility to use yogi toe lock, your peace fingers wrapped around the big toes. So the oppositional movement is pushing out through the heels, pulling with the strong arms. Paschimottanasana is definitely a hamstring stretch, the back of the upper thigh. However, I'm gonna feel it in the low back appropriate, down into the glutes, traveling down the hamstring, traveling down the calf, into the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, into the Achilles tendon, all the way down to the plantar fascia of the feet. You feel it in any of those areas, it's appropriate. And then inhale, I'm gonna pull myself forward and up or roll up as your option. On the exhale, I release the strap. And for our final pose, I'm gonna put the hands behind the chair again, point the feet down, Thrust up the chest and the chin in fish pose, Matsyasana, holding here. Inhale, chin to chest. There's that beautiful thyroid. Exhale, feet to the mat. Now for a final relaxation, um, you can go on the floor and swing your legs over your chair, which is actually quite nice, or just leave your blocks there, just a little bit of an adjustment. Put your legs on the blocks and relax the hands on the thighs. You can close the eyes and just take a few moments to find some gratitude and appreciation for the body for working so hard for us and maybe sending some love and light to someone in need. 
and slowly open the eyes, bringing the feet to the floor. And I like to honor you and all of us here together by saying the light and spirit within me honors the light and spirit within each of you. I want to thank you so much for your beautiful efforts. And what we say in yoga is namaste. So if you find yourself interested in my work and in contacting me, please feel free to go to my website and contact me from the contact form there at www.boomerandbeyondwellness.com. Again, that's www.boomerandbeyondwellness.com. Thank you so much for now. Be well.